we're gonna get gas, have a dance party in my car. Then we're gonna go to school and have a great time, do some Christmas crafts, say some candles. We're back in the game. Let's get Eleven days? What's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I teach third grade in Central California. And today is Vlogmas number I don't know. But it's the Monday before break and so we are going into some Christmas stuff. In case you couldn't tell, I'm an elf. Therefore, how to catch an elf from Adam Wallace and Andy Elkerton. Oh, you guys want to read it together? Let's look at the picture. Look who it is. Ready, go. It's Christmas Eve. Hip, hip, hooray. Yes, Santa's coming round. And now they're after me. So who are they trying to catch? They're trying to catch the elf. They're trying to catch the elf because who were they originally trying to catch? Santa. They were, but that's a lot harder to do, right? Yes, Yes, okay, and then point of view. What point of view is this story from? So if we look at the back here, see charts with the glasses? Who is telling the story? Who is narrating? Is it first person? The narrator is a character in the story. They are part of the action. That means the narrator is going to use words like I, me, my, us, ours, and we. Okay? If it's second person, they make you a part of the story. So they'll use words like you, your, and yours. If it's third person, the narrator is not a character in the story at all. They're removed from the action. They're just telling what happened. And they use words like he, she, they, him, her, or theirs. So what point of view is this from? What words do we see? Me. I see me. So what, per what uh, point of view is that? Is that first person where they talk about me, second person where they talk about you, or third person where we just use he, she, and they? It is first person because it says me. Not my friend upon a show who comes each year and says, No, I've got style, I've got great, I'm the elf that never quits. So how do they try to catch him? With a net. Yeah, a net made out of tinsel. And tinsel is this stuff that you might see around a tree. Sometimes it's like red or gold and colorful. You're wearing an elephant. How are you going to try and catch me? <laughs> what are they doing to catch some elves? Today we read how to catch an elf and now we are going to create our own story on how we would catch an elf. So our objective for today is I can create a narrative full of details. Detail, I was doing this because you can do anything you want. Detail is like, we can add more things to so Details are with add adjectives. We add all, the stuff for all of our senses, what we see, what we hear, what we smell. I can create a narrative full of detail. So that's what we were doing today. So how can you catch an elf? We already shared certain ideas. And even if you want to do something that's similar to someone else, you can be adding different details that make it seem like a totally different story. That's the power of detail. So yes, this graphic organizer that we have, ditto, on this graphic organizer, we have first, next, and last, okay? So this means you can either have one extravagant plan full of details. Like first, I'm gonna set up the candy canes. Next, because I know he loves candy canes, Next, I'm going to do this and this. Think of what you're going to do first to try to catch this out. Sometimes, if it's easier for you to draw a picture, because you can picture it, go ahead and draw your picture first. Then you can write. Brian, you can want to catch him to be friends. You can want to catch him to give him a Christmas present. So that wouldn't be a catching, that would be... 
Well, you're still catching them, right? So elves, they don't want, they want to be secret, right? They don't want to be by you. So even if you say, hey, elf, I have a present for you, he might just be too scared and try to run, right? Yeah. But if you kind of trap him, then you can give him that, or you can do the opposite. You want to keep the elf as a pet. Yes, but this is a narrative. So this means this is a this is a story. It can it's made up. If he did that real life, he would be so in the Yeah. What's the first thing you want to do to try to catch your elf? If you can think it, you can write it. So first I have this graphic organizer, how to catch an elf, which helps them with first, next, then, and last. However, most of us, we naturally wrote an intro paragraph and then had to then start with first, next, and last. Then after they were done, they got this paper to formally write their story on. And then I'll be giving them, and then I'll be giving them a little elf face to decorate and put on top of their writing. And then we will add that to our board, meaning they will be able to take their turkey writings home, which they were super proud of those ones, so I'm excited they get to take those home and show them off to their parents. So, learning about elves, writing about elves, and I am dressed to the part. Um, also, today's picture day, so there's that. <laughs> which I'm all for. I actually planned to wear my extravagant Christmas tree, but I forgot it was picture day, so elf, just as good. Um, I did put on I did end up putting mascara on because picture day, last picture day, I was sick. So I looked like an angel. So this one, I at least put on some mascara, call it good. But yeah, okay, my kids are at recess. I'm gonna eat my snack, then go pick them up and we will wrap up our elf writing. So remember, you first, next, and last. What's the first thing you would do to try to catch your elf? And next, you would do this. And then, then you would do this. Okay, so she's gonna have three little plans, or you can have one big plan. So you're gonna prepare for all of that can come for this Christmas madness, yeah? So let's change it. So how to train an elf? We're not trying to catch him. We're trying to teach him how to not eat the pop. Okay. So how to? How are you gonna train it? We got how to train an elf. I am so excited for this one. Snowballs! <laughs> and here's our how to play hide and seek with an elf. Love it. Okay, then I have one student who only speaks Spanish. So we are really working with Google Translate here to make this work. We are working on the English language, but it's just a process and distance learning in the beginning did not make that helpful. I normally find Spanish versions of the story so that way we read it all together, but then she can listen to it to have an idea of what we're talking about. 
but this elf one I could not find a translated version for. So I was a little frustrated with that. I tried to just explain through Google Translate of what elves are, what the story was about, and just what we are doing. And that seems to, that helps, you know, but I told her, go ahead, write it in Spanish, and then together we'll come to the back table and we'll go over the English translation and write at least one or two sentences in English. But my thing is I want her to, I don't know, I have such a hard time with, I don't know a second language, so so teaching how to speak a second language, if I know how to speak a second language, it's just really like, it's something that I really struggle with. But I'm trying to get better, I really want to be helpful. She loves to learn, so we are just doing what we can with what we got. Just having a good time, I love seeing her every day. She is excited to be here every day, so that's really, that matters a lot. Okay, I'm gonna have my coffee, have my snack. I'm tired today, but we only got four more days and then we're on Christmas break. Okay, gotta go. Mimi mm -hmm. put in the trap and we became friends. And I give him the present. Okay, so now what happens? Now that you guys are friends, what are you gonna do together? You're eating a pizza with her. <gasps> there we go. Do you ever just open the camera and think of yourself like, God, I've looked like that all day? Cause that's what that last look was. So just throw in some powder and we're just gonna move on. So we are done for the day. My online kids, we also did the how to catch an elf writing. Um, a little rockier online, but we spent the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes doing our elf drawing. So this is what I've been coloring during my prep time because I need it and coloring is relaxing, so. Here's my elf, and I thought it was very appropriate. How do we look? I need to add some jingle bells to it. Okay, oh, funny story time. So last week I had one of my kids come and tell me in Zoom that he got his first advent calendar. I think that's how you say it, I'm not really sure. But you know, the calendar with like the chocolates in it. So, so excited. And today he comes to class and he goes, someone, <laughs> someone ate all my chocolates. I'm a terrible teacher. I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I, it's not funny, I'm sorry, someone ate your chocolates. But I need to explain, this kid has a really good sense of humor. He has like four brothers, so I'm sure this is not the first time that something like this happened. And I know his mom probably went out and bought him chocolates. Also, I will probably buy him chocolates and give them to him tomorrow because I do feel bad. But it lets, I blame my parents because my parents would laugh at something like that. And so they taught me to laugh at stuff like that. Bad teacher award right here. <laughs> I just couldn't hold it in. It was just, oh, it was great. And mostly great because I know, like I said, he will get his chocolates. He's fine. Yeah. It just provided a really good story for the rest of us. So another funny story. I'm just full of stories this afternoon. But okay, little background. So the back door in my classroom that one is right next to the office door. So when you were entering the school, that's kind of where it's at. But because I feel like I never get to see my kiddos, especially my online ones, I taught them a secret knock. So whenever they have to come to the school for just anything, I said, do the secret knock on my door, then knock on the offices. That way I can casually go to the office and then get to see my kids and say hi. So needless to say, I really miss my kids, but 
I heard the secret knock today. And I was like, what? And so I went to the office, but no one was in the office. So I came back and I heard the knock again. And I was like, oh. so I went and one of my kids brought me a present. How sweet is that? Oh, and wait. Oh, this is my new favorite pen. Heck yeah, does it light up? Can't have that have hopes, right? Nope, okay. Super cute and chocolate. Ooh, I said it was gonna start being good this week. Maybe tomorrow, but yeah. Also, very hard to talk about elves without trying to like ruin whatever their parents have told them at home and all this because elf on the shelf is a huge thing. So as I'm like, how would you catch an elf? And then they're like, you can't touch an elf or else it dies. And I'm like, oh, dang kid. You know, there's different types of elves. So elf on a shelf, they have different magical powers, but they also have What's it called, like kryptonite? Um, but they also have different weaknesses. So the elf on the shelf, we can't touch. But these elves are, these are different. We won't kill them if we touch them, you know? Then I had another girl be like, um, Miss Blair, the elves will not move until you are asleep. It's against the rules, so you won't be able to see them or catch them, whatever it was. And I'm just like, these elves are different. So how do you want to catch Santa's elves? And then I had one student who didn't know what elves were. So it's like, I'm trying to tell them what an elf is without them freaking out about like a little creature coming in their home and wandering around doing whatever. So I'm trying to tell them like, it's a fantasy, you know, without like killing the whole vibe for the rest of the kids. So I'm just trying to be like, this is a narrative story we're making. This is a fantasy story that we are making. And just hoping that I didn't give that kid nightmares for the rest of his life. Because personally, I think the elf on a shelf is a little creepy. Like, what do you mean there's like, that doll can sit on my shelf and only moves when I'm asleep. None of my other dolls do that, cause, so no, that, that would not fly with me. I think it's terrifying. So I'm just trying to do my best to spread Christmas cheer without terrifying children or ruining whatever their parents have told them at home. So yeah, that is the struggles of being a teacher around Christmas time. Also, luckily third grade, majority of the kids still believe wholeheartedly in Christmas and Santa Claus, which is amazing because if you are a student watching this, absolutely you better believe in Santa Claus because if you don't believe in Santa Claus, you will not get a present under the tree. And elves, which I learned today, have such long lives and live off of children's cheer and Christmas joy and believing in Santa Claus and elves and that's what keeps them alive for so long. So you better believe in Santa Claus and elves or else Sorry, if there shouldn't, I hope there's kids not watching that because that definitely, I'm trying not to scar people. I should probably just stop here. Okay, but thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.